Let's speak to a UK member of the European Parliament, Wajid Khan. Joins us now live from Strasbourg. Wajid, thanks so much for speaking to us. On another front, uh, re the EU's reaction to all this, there's been a lot of talk now about actually extending that March 29th Brexit, Brexit deadline. But from the EU's perspective, I mean, is that fair? Theresa May didn't have to trigger, trigger Article 50 when she did. She could have bought more time earlier on to get her ducks in a row. So is it fair to ask for an extension at this point? Well, first of all, it's a true humiliation what happened last night for Theresa May. And your reporter just mentioned before having a cross-party approach. She should have been doing this two and a half years ago. So now she's trying to uh, have a new strategy where she gets more voices involved. Uh, and it's a shame that she's not having the opposition leader uh, involved in them talks. It, sh it just shows that she's going down the wrong line again. Uh, in relation to Article 50 extension, if you look at the deal yesterday, even if it was, uh, her, her deal was accepted, you you still need time to implement so, many, so, so much legislation before 29th of March. So the, uh, irrespective of the vote last night, the difficulty of the deadline of March the 29th is, is there, is, is prevalent, and we have to seriously look at uh, extending Article 50 for the very important reason that we don't crash out on a no deal. Uh, well, what do you think then of that uh, second referendum option that we just spoke to Sarah about? Does it make sense at this point now that the public knows the options are either a hard no deal Brexit, uh, and Theresa May always said no deal is better than a bad deal, or remain. Well, Theresa May's rhetoric and her red lines and a, a negotiating uh, approach from day one has been damaging to my country, the United Kingdom, and has been disrespectful at times to the EU negotiators. Uh, I've always advocated for a people's vote. Uh, I, I mean, I'm a f uh, personally, I'm against referendums, but if you start this process off because of David Cameron with a referendum, and if you want to give it democratic, uh, democratic legitimacy, you've got to give it back to the people. And our policy as a Labour Party is that we're going to try, obviously, to go for a general election, uh, and that's why we call the confidence motion yesterday. And if if we do not win that, if we, if we don't get success in that vote uh, today, later this evening, then we have to look at other options, a, co a customs union, which they've ruled out, uh, and the European Union will not give extension to just reopening the negotiation all over again in, in, a, in, a, in a detailed manner. But what we'll, they will look at is the opportunity uh, to extend if there's an election or another referendum. I believe it's absolutely fair, looking at now what we've got, the factual detail, and based on the referendum lies and the, the campaigning and the, okay. the breach of electoral law that is fair now to give people the opportunity to have their voice on this very important issue the most important issue okay. since World War two for our country it is I mean let me ask you then you you know you probably won't win this no confidence vote that uh, the opposition has launched against Theresa May so I have to ask you I mean what's really the point of it isn't it just adding more chaos to this already uh, chaotic and uncertain mix uh, that's in the UK Parliament and the public right now. Well, if you look at the fact that this has been the biggest defeat for, for any sitting government in ever, this is unprecedented. She's lost by a, a majority of 230 uh, uh, we votes. We know that, if but you, you're still, you nobody to wants this job. It was inevitable job. to call a no-confidence motion. Nobody wants this job, yeah, but though. You have is, is, to call is, a no-confidence motion in it. It sounds logical, but, yeah. but nothing's logical right now in what's happening. This is completely unprecedented territory. You know you're calling a vote that you'll probably lose. Why is that beneficial for anyone? Well, it, it's, it's, it's something we have got to look at because the government's lost with such a huge majority. I agree with you. Nobody wants the job. It's a very difficult situation to be in. And this is why I say, because of Parliament's gridlock, uh, and look, yesterday's vote should have answered a lot of questions, uh, but no, there were no answers. If, if, in fact, there are more questions now. And if you speak to different MPs, they have different versions of what they want following the historic defeat last night. That's right. why I say Parliament is no better uh, in providing solutions. So if they can't provide a solution, g give the trust back to the people to d let, them, let them decide what they want us to do as a country. But, but that's, uh, that still is, there's no clear decision for them to make in calling a fresh election. Um, I, anyway, Wajid, I'm sorry, we're, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, thanks so much, though, for giving your perspective there from Strasbourg. We greatly appreciate it.